with Shelburne's Luke Byrne. Uh, Luke, firstly, you're a Shelburne player now. How has pre-season gone since you've uh, moved there from Shamrock Rovers? Yeah, it's gone really well. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, we've worked hard. We've been in, you know, we've been in a lot and we've played games. You know, we've covered everything from gym sessions, running sessions, and uh, we're just looking forward to the start of the season now. Yeah, the League of Ireland is kind of interesting every off season because lots of players move. But you were at Rovers for a number of years. Why are you now a Shells player? Look, um, I had a long-term injury last year, and it wasn't my first at the club. And last year was the first year I really didn't. Uh, I wasn't a regular starter. So, look, these things come to an end. I had a great time there, but it was it was time for me to move on, and uh, I'm delighted to get this opportunity. Yeah, there was a really good piece in the papers recently about Shells and the type of. Uh, package are offering players not just a few quid a week tell me more about that and why you signed for the club yeah look I'm 25 now and um, you always hear ex-pros telling you you've got to get your house you know your house in order for after playing so it's something I've made a conscious effort to do in the last couple of years and I'm uh, not too far away from finishing a degree in DBS and Shells have offered me the opportunity to you know combine studying with playing and potentially move into a bit of work after that and coaching is something I want to continue doing so in terms of the whole package, it's uh, yeah, it really worked out for me. And also, you've gone from training in the mornings now to training in the evenings. Has that been a, you know an interesting change for you, given you've been full time for the last number of years? Yeah, it is different. You know, just your whole day revolved around uh, going training in the morning, eating, sleeping, and then, like to get ready for a morning session. That's obviously flipped a bit with the uh, the nighttime training. But I actually prefer training at night. I always have done so. Um, it's not too much of an issue. Yeah, everyone is tipping shells to win the league. It's a really good squad. It looks like the budget's increased as well. Is that a, an interesting position to be in, given everyone expects you to win the league? Like last year, you know, year before was Limerick, year before, you know, it was Waterford and so on? Yeah, look, at the start of every season, no matter what level it is, where it is, someone's going to be pinned as favourites. And uh, we'll let people do the talking. Uh, we know how hard we've worked. We know we've gotten the dressing room. Of course, you know, we want to get promoted. We want to win the league. But uh, if people have put us on a mantle, that's that's their decision, but uh, we're not going to treat ourselves as these uh, this runaway favourite like other people are speaking about. Away to Galway in the opening game as well. Your thoughts on that trip down to Amy DC Park? It's always a place I've enjoyed going to play. Yeah, it's always a good pitch. Um, it should be a good game. It's the first night of the season. Everyone thinks they've got a chance of you know going on and having a great year. Everyone's full of optimism, so I'm sure they'll come and they'll be full of full of energy. But we've just got to match that. Luke Byrne, thanks a million. Best of luck. Cheers, Jamie. So it's our first division focus here on the League of Ireland podcast with um, Paul Keegan and Gary Cronin. Uh, Gary, you're suited and booted for the start of the new season. Your thoughts on the voyage ahead, your first kind of full season in charge of Bray? Yeah, really looking forward to it, you know, and um, worked hard in the off-season trying to put a, a good squad together, good, um, good lads and experienced lads with the young players that have come in as well. So it'll all tell when the, when the league starts and the games start getting going, so really looking forward to it. Paul, I'm not sure how many pre-seasons you have under your belt at this stage, but how was the first one as a Bray player gone? Still tough enough. They're not getting any easier. You know what I mean. Uh, I think we've done a lot of good work, and we have had some good pre-season games, some good results. And you know, we're still building a team, but you know, we look we look good together so far. Why did you sign for Bray? To be honest, guys sold it to me and, and the owner. Like you know, I think that the plans they had in place, and they wanted to build. You know what I mean? A, a good team. You know, for years to come. You know what I mean? Getting the community involved and. They just sold it to me really and I wanted to get on board with it and I always say it's better to be on a club on the way up than a club on the way down so um, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah Gary it's definitely a different club even now than when you took the job towards the end of last season with the new owner and you know there's a lot of stuff going on off the pitch as well. How have things moved since you've taken the job to now because the squad is really good and there's lots of stuff going on off the pitch and the club definitely has a better image in the public eye than it had even a year ago. Yeah the, the thing for me when I went in I knew that was coming. Uh, obviously the chairman very enthusiastic and he's made a lot of changes off the field. I thought it was important from my point of view to uh, sort of have a fresh start with the play- from the playing uh, point of view as well and that's why I made so many changes um, because like Paul was saying there the club was on the up, there's a lot of initiatives gone in and I just felt the whole fresh start from, from, from top to bottom was, uh, was needed so that's what we're trying to do, it'll be difficult, it won't be easy at all uh, but we'll try and enjoy it as we go. How did you go about building your squad? Because the off season for League of Ireland managers is a very is a very busy period, even maybe as busy as when you're in season. Yeah, I mean, obviously you've plucked on experience from previous managers, particularly with uh, when there was that time at Longford with Cuzzo, and uh, you look at one or two things there. But uh, I think it was important to get the experience. Um, I was never going to have a team of you know Cork City players or Dundalk players with the vast experience that they have. So it was important for me to get those two or three experienced lads. I think. I, I've got really quality experience, obviously with Paul and his experience and 
and and then Gabriel Sava was experienced with Dundalk and, and we have Huey Douglas there obviously local Bray lad there's a lot of Premier football behind them and and uh, obviously other players so I was delighted with the, the mix of um, experienced players and, and the young lads that I have coming through. Yeah Paul I saw your friendly away to Shamrock Rovers in road zone and you guys really tried to play out from the back and pass it I know the pitches this time of year might not be great but what sort of style do you think your team will play and as a centre midfield player your role in that trying to link defence and attack? Yeah, I think, look, you know what I mean, Gaz is you know, a young manager, he wants to play, he wants to pass the ball and you know, we're not afraid to mix it up either, you know, I think uh, you know, different circumstances will lead to different games and you know, we'll always want to play and want to pass and we obviously want to put on a, on a good game for all the fans to come out and watch us and to show good football, but you know, we, we want to win games as well, so you know, it's getting that balance right and uh, you know, get us out of the division, you know what I mean, so we'll see how we go. Yeah, of course, yourselves and Shells have been tipped by everybody, including the bookies, to be the top two and to be fighting it out for promotion. But the league will be tougher than that, as, as you've experienced, Gary, in your time you know, at Longford. And so if it's not just as easy as you've got the two best squads on paper, you're going to win the league. Yeah, we've seen that in 2014 when, with Longford when we signed like so Stephen Rice, Pat Sullivan, Pat Flynn and uh, Kevin O'Connor. We had a fantastic um, gr- group of players. And sure, at one stage there was talk of, uh, of the manager getting sacked because we didn't have a good start. So it's going to be very, very difficult. Um, I don't look, really look at it like that, to be perfectly honest with you. I look at the squads that are built throughout the, throughout the league and I think it's going to be the toughest force division in many years. So uh, we've taken nothing for granted. It's going to be difficult for us to win games and we'll make it difficult for other teams to win games. It'll be a competitive league. Finally, Paul, just checking the fixtures here. You're uh, away to Cabin TD first up. A nice local derby, quarter to eight on Friday of next week, of course, because it's a week later as well. Your thoughts on that game and trying to start with a win against... Uh, the other local team in the league? Yeah, it's obviously a close game, you know, and uh, there'll be a bit of a bit of spice in it, no doubt. Um, I think it'll be a tough game, and you know, first 15, 20 minutes of any of any opening game, especially the first game of the season, is going to be lively, and it's all about you know using the experience that we do have to calm the lads down, get a foothold in the game, and, and take it from there. Let's look, lads. Thanks a million. Cheers, Jamie. Thanks a lot. With the draw, manager Tim Clancy. Tim, you're definitely the best dressed here today. Tell us about your lovely blazer. Uh, it's a Christmas present from the wife, so I had to put it on. Very nice. Uh, Tim, your thoughts on the season ahead? It's a long off-season, even longer for the first division clubs. You you know went so close last year and you'd be hopeful to try and go one better this year. Yeah, Jamie, as you know, it is a very, very long uh, off-season in that. And I suppose this stage now everyone just wants to get the season started. Uh, we've had a good pre-season. Um, no injuries, which is the main, main thing in pre-season. The players are looking fit. So, yeah, we dropped, uh, we dropped out last year in the semi-final of the playoffs against Finn Harps. And there wasn't a lot in, in many of the games in the first division. And... Hopefully this year will be as competitive. Yeah, you know, the, the season looks really nice. You set up Shelburne, who you were linked with in the off-season. Bray have invested well. You guys went close last year. Longford, teams coming down from the Premier. We're not sure what they'll be like as well. So what's your thoughts on, on trying to end up in that top four and have a chance to get promoted as you did the year just gone? Yeah, it'll be difficult. Um, Shells, are, listen, they look like they're the ones that everyone will be chasing. And rightly so, with the squad they've put together and the investment that they've had in there. So um, Bray will be, will be very good. They've had good, good results in pre-season. I've seen Longford play a couple of times as well and Neil will have them playing really well. So obviously with Galway, Limerick, you have the two teams uh, with Bray and Limerick coming down. You have um, Athlone have signed a lot of very good players as well. So we know it's going to be very competitive and listen, we'll try and stay alive. Uh, as live in many games as possible and hopefully near the end of the season we'll be up there. Yeah, your opening game is against your friend Stephen Henderson at home on, on Friday week, the week after the Premier Division starts and they'll be coming to United Park hopefully as well. Cove had a couple of good seasons, they dropped off last year but it should be an interesting start for both teams. Yeah, Hendo's listen, he's overachieved massively with, with his resources down in Cove and um, it's good to get them at home this, this, uh, this season twice. We were a difficult place to go down there last year and especially with the first day of the season everyone's looking forward to it and we're probably hoping that maybe the travelling on the day might give us a little bit of an advantage so we're certainly happy to be at home uh, starting off but listen we know every game is going to be difficult and um, if we can get off to a good start then we go into Longford the week after and it's a toss of a coin most of the games this season. Yeah how is your uh, captain Jay Coyle he broke his leg late last season as well and it was awful time and going into the playoffs as well how is he and when do you expect him to be back? Yeah, Jake's done really well. Um, that's the main benefit of a long off season is it gives players um, a good bit of time to recover. Uh, Jake, he's back jogging now, and this we're hoping to have him back in the next month or so. Probably, uh, we're not going to rush him. It was a long injury he had, and it's a very serious injury. But um, Jake coming back in in a month's time, six weeks time, will be like a new sign of us anyway, and um, it'll certain bolster our squad going forward and um, we're looking forward to getting back he's a big player for us yeah, Speaking of new signings you signed Thomas Byrne from St Patsy wore the captain's armband in the second half in the friendly at Richmond on Friday as well like unbelievable player talking to Conor Byrne recently one of the best he's ever seen but has a, a little bit of a temper how will you keep him cool to be the great player that he can be in, in your hopeful promotion push? Um, listen 
Thomas, people are saying he has a temper and whatnot. If you look, he was reacting to tackles. He's probably the most foul player in the country. Every game he gets fouled 15, 20 times, and a lot of it is cynical fouls because he's a small kid, but he's very strong and he's wiry. And listen, as he has touched on there, his, his ability is unbelievable. And it's one of the ones that we've got to try and get Thomas to play at the best of his ability. And he's a player I've tried to speak to early on in the off season, and I ended up getting a good conversation with him. And um, we're over the moon to get him into into draw then he could be one that would help us finish as high up the table as possible and just finally ask Neil Fenn the same question about Shells and Bray being the two hotly tipped ones probably the two biggest budgets as well he said he definitely wants to try and you know be above them this season I know you'll be the same and you know on paper it's not always what happens in the league matches themselves as we've seen but we also have seen the likes of Limerick and Waterford with the bigger budgets have gone up yeah listen I think whoever finishes above Bray and Shells will be sitting at the top of the league I'd say come the end of the season and we're hoping that we can be in the mix um, for as long as possible and we know it's not going to be easy for us um, with the resource that we have compared to other clubs, but there is four or five, four or five teams that will be challenging up the top of the top of the table, and um, certainly I think there's an improvement in the overall standard of the squads in the first division. So it's going to be another very exciting season. Long for manager Neil Fenn, how are you? I'm very good, Jamie. Thank you. Neil, you've had many League of Ireland pre seasons as a player and as a manager. You're getting ready for the big kick off again. Yeah, we're here at the launch today, so um, it's, it's good to see it being publicised the way it is and seeing all the managers now and we're preparing for the new season. How does pre-season work for a League of Ireland manager because it's quite hectic? It's hectic, it's a very busy time and you know, you're, 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 you're playing different friendlies in different places, it's always a hard time to judge, trying to get players minutes, trying to treat with injured players and, and um, it's, it's, it's quite a busy time, yeah. How have you gone about putting your squad together for this year? Because you've lost a couple, but you've also added a couple of really good players as well. Yeah, the, the main focus at the start of the season was trying to keep the, the ones we had. They were the main, they were the priority. Um, obviously, we lost a few that, that I didn't want to lose, but we did. Um, so then we had to replace them and, and get some new, some new bodies in, a little bit of experience as well. Um, so we're looking good at the moment. Is that hard, given you're a first division club and there are clubs in the Premier who have more money and can just take players effectively every year because they're not on longer term contracts? Yeah, it's, it's difficult trying to keep a good squad together. Obviously, if you've got players that have done well in, in your season before in the first division, they'll go or, they, or they'll, they'll want to go if, um, if a team wants to sign them. So you're just trying to convince them that Longford's the best place for them to play and, and, and try and get, get another year out of them and hopefully try and get promoted. But no, we're happy with the lads we've brought in as well. We're delighted with the, with the squad we've got. Yeah, I've seen you guys once in pre-season, one of the pre-season games in the AUL on a freezing cold night as well. I know you played Dundalk recently and, and you know, you've played Cork, you've played a couple of top teams in the Premier and competed quite well in those games. Yeah, we've done well. The, the, the main focus in pre-season is the fitness obviously and, and, and getting lads game time we, um, we, we're we delighted with how that's gone the, the performances in pre-season have been good but you can't read too much into pre-season as you know it's a it's, it's a difficult time you don't know the loads people are, or teams are, uh, what they're doing the day before matches and, and everything else some lads are tired or, or whatever so we've got Cliftonville this week in another, in another friendly away so we've had some good friendlies Yeah Shells and Bray tip by everybody to, to win the league year hopeful to spring a little surprise and be involved in that race no, well, I think they're probably just looking at the squads and, and, and the investment. They're probably the two favourites, but you know that's that's not to say we won't be up there and we won't be giving it a crack. And finally, away to Limerick in the opening game, they've had a, a kind of mixed off season and you know lost some players. And there was news this week that they're going to have a consortium to back them up financially this year as well. So probably a bit of an unknown that you're going to face. A little bit, yeah. I mean, they, they, they've got a good squad. I saw them out in the AUL play, and, and they're a young physical team with with a couple of older heads as well, with with Kelly and Williams. So no, they'll be a good squad. Neil, yeah, thanks a million. Best of luck. No problem.